Hey y'all, welcome back to the kitchen. I just love it when you stop by. And today I'm going to be cooking some fresh green beans. Now, to some of y'all, I know it's old hat. But there's a few people that might not have ever cooked their own fresh green beans. Now, I went to uh, Kroger and they had them 99 cents a pound. So I've got a couple of pounds. These didn't come from our garden. The water has just about done our garden in. We've had so much rain. But when you buy green beans on one end, there's a little where it grew on the vine. You snap that and you pull it. And if a string pulls with it, you pull that string off and discord it. And then you just snap your bean in half. Now, I've already done most of them. But I'm just showing you. And sometimes when my beans, like on these, very few of them had any uh, strings whatsoever. So what I do, I'll get my kitchen snips and I'll just go ahead and snip that end off. Like that. Only I'm just cutting it in half. I'll snip it off and then I cut them in the size pieces that I want them. Now if you're going to do, uh, wrap them in bacon or make them pretty and elegant looking, you're going to want to leave your beans pretty well whole. You snip the ends off. But if you're going to make just like cut green beans, cut them in half. So I've got mine ready right here. I've got them, there were no strings on any of them. I've got them cut to little pieces all about the, well, they're not the same size, but they're okay with me. And I'm um, getting the bacon done over here. Okay. I wanted to bring y'all over here close to show you what I do when I'm getting my bacon. I use my kitchen scissors and I just snip my bacon in little bitty pieces. And I put it, I just let it fall in the pot. Once, cut it this way. Maybe I can cut through that skin first. And I think I've got four or five pieces here because I like a lot of flavoring in my beans. So I'm just going to snip this in little pieces and let it get uh, good and crispy brown and render the fat because we need that fat for flavor. And sometimes if I realize I've cooked too much, I'll just take some of it out and use it for something else. You can always put it on a baked potato or something if you've got a little too much bacon, but you need that grease rendered for the flavoring. Okay, that'll separate as it cooks in there. And uh, I'll bring you back and show you in a minute, and then we'll get on with cooking our green beans. Okay, you can see that the bacon is getting kind of brown, and it's making some good seasoning on the bottom of the pot. Now, I had cooked a ham a day or two ago, and we had some ham left. So what I'm doing is, I'm just cutting me up some pieces of that ham. It's hickory flavored to add some extra flavoring into my green beans. So I'm just about ready to add my green beans and my chicken broth and just let them cook until they're the, uh, the doneness that I like. Now some vegetables, I like what they call tender crisp, but I like my green beans soft. So I'm going to um, add my green beans in here. And then I'm going to add my chicken broth. Chicken stock, this is organic chicken stock that I get at Costco and I really do like it. I like cooking with chicken stock instead of just plain water because uh, the flavor is wonderful. Now if you don't have fresh green beans, you can use frozen or you can use canned green beans. And a lot of times when I'm using canned, I'll pour the water out that's on them that they were canned in at the factory and um, I'll add fresh water or my chicken broth and season it just like I'm doing now. Sometimes I do use the water that they were processed in. Now I need just a little bit of more juice in here, so I'm just going to put a little water until they're almost covered. Because I'm going to tell you what, I like to sop that water, that broth with all the flavoring in it, yeah, that's a southern thing, I guess. You get that cornbread or biscuit or garlic toast or whatever, and you sop you up some of that juice. It's good stuff. Okay, I'm going to put about two tablespoons of onion powder and a teaspoon of garlic powder in here, and I put one teaspoon of salt. 
and I will test that and see how the flavoring is. Sometimes I overdo it and have to add a little more broth, but we'll see. Now when I'm cooking fresh vegetables, I like to add just a pinch of granulated sugar. That just does something to the flavor. My Aunt Audrey taught me that she put more than a pinch. But my husband doesn't like sweet vegetables. So I'm just going to put just a little bit, just a dab. Maybe a half of a teaspoon. Just enough to kill that what we call the fresh taste. Now sometimes uh, when my bacon's done, I will lift it out and caramelize an onion in the bottom of the pan and uh, cook my green beans with caramelized onion. But today I thought, well, I don't know if any of the kids are coming or not, and I know they don't like onion, so I would just do them like this. Another option, caramelize your onion, put your green beans in with some uh, chicken broth like I have and your bacon, and then add you a can of tomatoes in with it. If you want to add bell pepper, you can. Celery if you want to. But you have a Creole green bean that is absolutely delicious. So you have several options with just, um, you know, with just cooking your green beans. I like to use fresh garlic. But today, I'm going to do just what you've seen me do. I'm going to put onion and garlic powder and salt because just about everybody has that. I'm going to crank a little black pepper in them. You know I like that black pepper. It's just some good stuff. Unless your brother puts down a rose and asks you to smell of the rose, then it's not very good because you sneeze and sneeze and sneeze. Ask me how I know that. Happened to me one time many years ago. Okay, I'm going to get a spoon so I can taste it and see if I've got the right amount of flavoring in there. Let me see. To me, that's perfect. I'm going to let these beans cook down until they, they're going to turn a darker green and be tender. And I will bring you back and show you. And I sure do thank y'all for uh, watching and staying with me and your comments. I sure am loving this. We're getting good food to eat, and I'm having fun cooking it. Okay, the green beans are done. And see how they've turned from a bright green to the mossy green color? And they're tender. Let me show you. See? They're... Um, and the juice, the seasoning was right. It's absolutely delicious. So I'm going to get a little bowl and cool it a little bit, and I'll show y'all a serving of them. But this is so easy, and it's so good to know what's in your food. There's no preservatives in it when you buy fresh and cook it yourself. So y'all need to try this, and I'm going to be doing a few more fresh vegetables while the season, uh, while they're available and in season around here. And I want y'all to learn to, you know, be more vigilant about what you're eating and what you're feeding your family. Cook homemade. Cook from scratch. Make your food yourself. I would rather grow my own than to buy it at the store, but our garden didn't make because of the rain. But we'll plant a fall garden and try again. But um, buy some fresh vegetables and make your own and you'll be so proud of yourself and it's so delicious. I could eat these green beans for a meal by themselves, but I love vegetables. So let me get a little bowl and I'll set it up and show you all what it looks like. Hey, I've got me a bowl of green beans and they're absolutely wonderful. They're hot as all get out, but I'm on a I'm going to blow my germs on them and cool me a little bit and taste of it. And I want to get a bite of that ham. I like that ham with them. But let me get it cool enough because it's just a little too hot for me right now. See, when I cook them with bacon and ham and all that good seasoning in them, I can just eat them by themselves. I don't have to have potatoes and gravy and fried chicken to go with them. I like them just like this. Now, sometimes I like to get me a piece of cornbread to sop in that juice. And I have some Vidalia upside down cornbread that I'm going to eat with them after a while. But right now, my son's calling. Right now, I'm just going to take a bite. It's just 
hard to beat fresh vegetables. So see, y'all are getting a good list of stuff that you can fix for a meal. Gather it over there to the table, turn those cell phones off, and enjoy good food and good fellowship. And they, they ain't no telling what you'll find out from each other if you'll just talk. But sometimes you won't text what you can talk to somebody and not leave a paper trail. Really though, y'all make some family memories around the table. That's what it's all about. That's why I like my home and my homey kitchen and and we sit at the table and share meals and, and share what's happened through the day. And you know what? We've made it 49 years of marriage. Y'all need to y'all need to do so. We've done something right. Have some fellowship with each other and visit. And I know I repeat this at the end of every video and you can just cut it off before you get there. But it's good advice. It'll make your kids happier. It'll make your home happier if y'all share each other. I thank y'all so much for watching and being a part of my YouTube channel. And I want you to come back often. And tomorrow we'll have another good recipe. So be sure and come back and have a blessed weekend.